That's right. Okay, uh, welcome to Talking Shop. We are back at it. Um, no Ernie, no Corey. Matt and I, though, because we uh, really do love you more than the rest. It appears we gave up some of the other pastors for Lent. For Lent, that's right. Uh, we have um, Jesus cleansing the temple for the first time. <laughs> we didn't actually know. That's a good discussion. I'm Probably not a good discussion for a sermon, but it is uh, early on in John's Gospel. John chapter 2, verses 13 through 22. Jesus is upset, causing a ruckus in the temple. Making weapons. Making weapons, Ooh. yes. Uh but uh, we will take a look at it. Uh, like, subscribe, share it with your friends and family. We'll get after it. Away, spit out my Lord in every way. Yet I'm still welcome in the arms of the King. All right. Okay. Uh, I have punched and been knocked down. to 20. Uh, we should say, we've talked about this, we were talking earlier that uh, uh, it is John's gospel is the reason we know that his ministry was at least or almost three years long, mm -hmm. uh, which everyone kind of agrees. And it's because mm -hmm. of things like this, this regular accounting of our Lord's going to Jerusalem or observing the festivals yeah. uh, that, that he does. And so... Um, well, uh, and he had to, to be faithful. Yeah. So, right. you know, so, but yeah, it's interesting that John actually records the three Passovers. Yes. Um, yeah. So we have those distinctly, along with some of the other festivals that you, yeah. uh, you get intermixed. Right. Um, so. Uh, and so, yeah, so it's Passover, uh, uh, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Uh, everyone goes up to Jerusalem. That's, yep. Uh, right? Yep. Uh, and he goes into the temple, uh, and what does he see? Uh, he, he sees, uh, well, well, I was going to say a marketplace, but that's what he gets to later. So I've just stolen some thunder there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, he sees oxen and sheep and pigeons. Pigeons. See, now, I, I read that text, and you would expect people to have that, yeah. right? Um, but what is different about it is he finds those selling the oxen and the sheep and the pigeons. So, so it's not like they're bringing the oxen and sheep and pigeons right. into the temple. They have... They've they've made it convenient on everybody. Yeah, and so there's a uh, lot there's a yeah there's a lot that's going on. So it used to be, um, you have certain sacrifices are are called for, and uh, you would bring that animal. Well, now you know um, maybe you don't ten animals. Maybe yeah. you don't have a, a buddy that does or whatever. So you just buy one when you get there. Yeah, you know it's convenient. Yeah. And they've all got signs on them that say "Certified Sacrifice yes. Ready." Bob, I'm sure so, they do. You know, I mean, that's the thing. Uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And so it had what I, I guess what he sees there isn't maybe this sh is something we need to be reminded of. It isn't rare though. Like this is what the temple had become. Yeah, yeah. Like what you see is the machinery of the temple. This yes. is the way it works. Yeah. And, and I guess what, what rubs on him, you might say, is that it, that's what it had become. Yes. Um, so it's not that these things aren't needful for the temple to operate, right. but it had become all about those things. Those things. Um, right. Versus the, the things that God is doing through the operation. So. Um, what, what about the money changers? What's with that? Uh, there's a couple different ones on that. Um, one of them, this has to go with the, the coin to pay the temple tax. Right. Um, that they wouldn't allow pagan money, if you will, to pay that tax. So you had to bring it in. Caesar be claimed to be right. a god. You're not going to use it. You right. And because, because that money is different, you know, because we had to put the effort into mint this money and do all of that. Well, now we got to charge you an upcharge, if you will. So. Uh. So just like when you walk, you know, you've got the, if you go to another country, you've got the exchange rate. Right. But then you've got what they charge you to actually exchange that yeah, money. Yeah. Right. Yeah, uh, to profit. do their business. They're yeah. making a profit on it. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, I think that's the biggest thing that, that Jesus has a problem with is that, that they have turned the machinery of the temple into a business for themselves. Oh, okay. Right. So, so now we're exploiting people in, to some extent, almost like the indulgences. Now we have to. 
now we have to 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 pay yeah. in order to get the blessings funny, of God. When you say that, I was thinking of the uh, um, the famous Martin Luther movie where he he goes that trip to Rome, oh, to yeah. the Vatican, yeah, and he like everywhere he turns, you're paying for something, yeah, right. And there's somebody profiting off of all the uh, uh, the little things you can do to to uh, get time off of purgatory or whatever, right, but. But so same here. It's like it's not just that they are providing this service or they're doing this to care for their brother and sister in the faith. Right. This is a business. Yeah. They're making money off it. Yeah. Um, uh, and, yeah. And, and so just like your certified organic uh, meal costs right. more than a regular, you know, these right. these certified sacrifice ready <laughs> animals are gonna are gonna yeah. cost you a little yeah, more. Yeah. That's right. That's right. So we've done the work for it's you. Like, Dad, do we need to bring the pigeons? That nah, we'll just pick some up when we get there. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 So. So. Um, so Jesus freaks out. I mean, maybe that's not a good way to say it, but he's upset. Uh, and um, it says he makes a whip. Uh, uh, what's the Greek word there? We were looking at the flagellum or uh, Yeah, it it's actually scourge is the way that the, the uh, it's the same word that is used to whip his back, whip I think. Whip his back later, yeah, that's um, what I thought. But, uh, but yeah. And uh, a whip of cords, and he starts driving them out. Um now, he and it says it says he drives them out with the sheep and the oxen. Yeah. So yeah, it's good. Like the uh, shock value of it's pretty good. I think. Yeah. Like he's driving the people out. Yeah. With the whip. Yeah. And along come the sheep and the yeah. oxen. Can you can you imagine walking up into the temple as this is happening, yeah. and all of a sudden all of these like sheep and pigeons and oxen, it's like. And What's the people are running from a guy right. with a whip, and, right. they're, and they're going, eh, maybe I'll come back tomorrow. <laughs> right. Yeah. right. So he drives them out. Uh, they leave with the animals. He flips over the uh, money changers' tables. And so you can, I mean, it's a very um, theatrical kind of thing. If you yeah. can imagine it in your head, yeah. right? Uh, coins go spilling everywhere, that kind of stuff. Um, and, and he... He says to those who, it's interesting, I don't know why he picks out those who sold pigeons, maybe just a point of reference, right? Yeah. He says to those guys. <laughs> oh, that's true. Um, yeah, I missed that. You know, it that. is, it's kind of no. interesting. Um, you know, the, the, the question is that, mm. you know, do not, well, it's not a question. He says, don't make my father's house a house of trade or a marketplace. Yeah. He talks about, and that is what it had become. Yeah. Right? Um, at, at this moment, though, It's like the, if again, if you were like picturing it, is as, as the dust settles for a moment in time, the machinery that is the temple has ceased. Yeah. The temple stops. Yeah. Now, it's not going to stop for very long. Yeah. But for this moment, it's actually done. Yeah. There's nothing's moving. Well, or at least slows down. I think it yeah. was uh, one of our professors who always said, you know, if you look at the Temple Mountain, how big it is, this is. It, the whole Temple Mount right, is right. not disrupted right. by this, right? So, so most likely the sacrifices are still going on. Most likely, you right. know, but but yeah, I mean, there there may be a point where the priests are all of a sudden looking out at the crowd and going, the "Hey, the- where's the lineup for the sacrifices?" <laughs> right? Because um, people couldn't get them; they'd yeah. flown the coop. Like, uh, we're, we're waiting. Yeah, yeah, they're on back. Yeah, order. so so it did. <laughs> yeah, it's like walking into a store, right? And all of a sudden, looking around, going, yeah. "Why am I the only one here?" Um, so. So yeah, but it does it does bring the temple to a stop. I had a, just a thought because yeah. I had missed it earlier on the pigeons. Um, the pigeons are the sacrifice that you give if you can't afford yeah. more. Yeah. And so maybe he singles out them because they're the ones who you might say are the most exploitive, right? Of they're the ones who are who are are. Um, they're dealing with the poor. Uh, yeah, the they're poor. they're dealing with the poorest yeah. of the poor, and yeah. and here's going. You're making a profit off of these people who are just seeking to be faithful to their God. Yeah, right. Oh, that's a um, good point. So anyway, yeah. kind of interesting. Yeah. Uh, so take this all away, right? Don't make my father's. Now that's a big point too. Uh, this is his father's yes. house. Yeah. Uh, and so it's establishing um, his relationship to the Almighty, obviously. Um, uh, and, and what you, you know, 
what we've come to expect, I guess, uh, that this is the Son of God, right? Um, it makes it a house of trade. And then they, the disciples remember, and they'll remember again. They're going to remember a lot throughout this gospel. <laughs> but uh, they, they remember uh, what? What is written. Yeah. Psalm 69, verse 9. Yeah. Um, there, I did your homework for you, although you should have a study Bible around. But uh, right. anyway, right. Uh, the zeal for your house will consume me or will eat me up. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that, that, that Jesus walks in and he sees something happening in that place that isn't the way that it's supposed to be. Yeah. And, and wanting it to do its job and its job alone, right. he, he seeks to, you might say, reform it. I don't know that reform happens very well with a whip, right. but uh, nonetheless. Well, so, and if you, there's a lot that you could probably, in a sermon, you sprinkle in here without going into all the details, but that, you know, the temple being built off of the pattern of the tabernacle mm-hmm. is is the meeting place of God and man, mm-hmm. right? And And it was, the whole system was to facilitate a sinful person meeting the holy God, right. receiving his blessings. Yeah. And so his house is a place where that happens, mm-hmm. right? Right. And so his he's yeah consumed with this uh passion because it 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 isn't meeting that need anymore. Yeah. It's become something perverted. Well, and again, I mean, you know, just like just like Luther was against the or the indulgences, and the reason he was is because it was putting into the thoughts of the people's minds, we have to pay to get God's blessings. Yeah, yeah. And to some extent, that's happening that's here in the temple happened. too, yeah, right? Yeah. We have to pay a price in order to meet God. Right. Rather than God paying the price to meet us. Right. Um, and, uh, you know, and, and humbling himself and doing that to come down to, to our level. And so, yeah, he, he sees this temple as, as changing how people view God, and that is not a good thing. Uh, right. So, so uh, folks are a bit upset, <laughs> <laughs> right? And they want to know, oh, most and likely. it's interesting, uh, I don't think... I don't think anyone today would ever respond this way, but it <laughs> seems to happen uh, more frequently. But I think it's like they they want to know the proof that you have to do something yeah. like this, yeah. um, right? What sign do you show us uh, to do these things? Like, you know, what's your uh, how would you say it? Like, what is your what is your uh, your credits that yeah. you know something like that yeah like, that's uh, what i was just thinking what are your credentials, credentials right and, yeah, and, and for yeah. them it was if you're going to do something like this you better be able to do what a prophet does you better be okay. able to bring us signs from god yeah. you better you better show us the authority that you've been given in order to uh and again signs authority those are all kinds of the same thing i think maybe john uses signs more than authority that'd be a, an interesting Look at that. Oh, yeah, sure. sure. I know that Jesus, you know, John says, you got the signs, this is the first, first sign. Yeah, this yeah, yeah, was, yeah. you know, yep. all the way yep. through. So, yep. um, uh, yeah. And uh, so they're, they're looking for what makes you think you have the right to usurp this machinery what, what, that's been put in place. Right. right. And so in the midst of that, the machinery is, in a sense, sort of stopped. Mm-hmm. They say, give us proof. And it's, it is, he offers up, tear it all down, and I'll build it up in three days. And I'll build it up in three days. Yeah. Yep. Tear down this temple. Yeah. Um, and uh, somebody who's better in Hebrew needs to write in on this. What's this in Hebrew? Because, you know, in, in Greek, you've got the, the near and the far that connect in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? It'd be interesting to see if, when Jesus would say that in Aramaic or in Hebrew. Um, how that could be confused, right? Okay. So anyway, that was just yeah, a, because because obviously we know he's talking talking about his body, right? But, right. Uh, but yeah, so their immediate reaction though is they hear it as obviously the temple that mm-hmm. they're in, mm-hmm. and uh, and it's taken they say forty six years to build it, and in fact it wasn't even finished. I don't believe like completely finished. It's close, uh, yeah. Um, depending on it, Herod's big renovation project, right. um, would have would have been coming at least to a conclusion. Yeah. So, because you've got this whole, we'll get to it in Mark when we get into uh, 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 
it, well, it's really our end times reading, but you know, they're marveling at the temple. Mm. And if you read some, it's because their entire lives, as some commentaries, it's, it's they've had scaffolding, scaffolding. around it, right? Yeah, they've yeah, been yeah. seeing a work site, yeah, and yeah. now all of it is revealed in its splendor. Yeah. And Jesus takes that glorious moment and says, yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, it's all coming down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, you know, it is funny. Uh, I, I know I've talked in Bible study uh, classes before how uh, the temple doesn't have a great track record. It's like... No. Every time they get the thing finally built, <laughs> it it doesn't last for a no, whole long time, yeah. and it comes down again. Yeah, uh, yeah. So, so yeah. So they, um, uh, you know, how can you do this, right? And you get the parenthetical statement there, um, but he was speaking about the temple of his body, mm-hmm. and the disciples remember again. This is the same word as below uh, that he had said this. Um, when he's raised from the dead. So, I mean, heavy foreshadowing, obviously. Yeah, this is yeah. leading us towards the end of, of the gospel. Um, uh, but, but it is a good point, right? When, therefore, he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this. The result of that is what? They believed the scriptures, yes. what was written. Yes. And, and John puts that in there even before the words that Jesus had spoken, right? Yes. So they believed the, the scriptures, the things that had been written, yeah. um, and, and the words that Jesus had spoken to them. Um, and so, yeah, they take these signs and these wonders and, and understanding them, seeing them in light of the resurrection, they are then able to believe yeah. that Jesus is the Messiah, yeah. right? Um, which we were noting on, we do it all the time after Easter uh, during the during the Thomas thing. Many things have been written, but these things are written that you may Amazing. believe yeah. that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. And yeah. here John is even foreshadowing that, if you will, yeah. in chapter 2 uh, of saying, you know, his disciples, based on everything that Jesus did, believed in him or, or believed in the scriptures, in the scriptures. Because, of, because of this. Yeah. I'm writing this so that you, you may believe. also yeah, believe the that's scriptures, right? right. right? Uh, uh, yeah, blessed so. is, is the one who does not see and yet believe yeah. at the end of this gospel, yeah. right? So the, the, the drive of it, so we're at chapter 2, you get to the very end of this gospel, the drive of it is, is always back to, to the word yeah. and, and what was said. And, yeah. um, uh, if nothing else, then I ought to alert you if you're preaching it, um, I mean, to, to kind of hammer that home. Yeah. Um, this well, this is that kind of message of all this stuff that is happening in the temple. It is it is to, to go back to that word which was which was written, what yeah. was said. And, yeah. And that is the source of our belief. So it's not what we can pay. It's not what we can do. It's not our bargaining chip with our God. It is it is the one whose body is that temple. Yeah. Well, and I was thinking about this as a Lenten text and the way that I was going to preach in it, kind of preaching it. And, and uh, you know, I was thinking a good title might be Clean House. And that's kind of what Lent is about, right? Is that we're, we're, we're returning to God. We're refocusing. We're paring yeah. things down to what is essential and what is, what is needed. Mm. Um, and to some extent, that's what this does. Jesus is trying to bring back the temple. And in doing so, he refocuses Yes, after the resurrection, so you know, three years later from this text, but he refocused his his disciples back down onto what is essential. Yeah. The words that God has spoken, the realities and the promises that he has given, and especially seen through his son Jesus Christ. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so uh, it's a it's a great time to revisit that and refocus and remember even what church is all about. Yeah. Right? And and why we're doing this, right? We're we're not coming in, if you will, so that God will like us. We're coming in to receive those blessings of God and and moving everything else out of the way to yeah. to get there. And so, yeah. And I mean, again, what a great picture that the temple with all those things stops. What you have is this man standing in the mm-hmm. middle, mm-hmm. and and it's his temple to buy. He is that. Yeah. He's all those things. He's where we meet God now. Yeah. You know, uh, he, he the temple is there. Yeah. Uh, for hmm. us. So yeah. Uh, great stuff. Lots, lots to preach there. Uh, it's a powerful text. 
Um, we were kind of all over the place today. Yeah. I'll just say that for the video, yeah, but yeah. hopefully no, you got a good, nugget though. from that. It's so. It's, sometimes it's the way it goes. Uh, <laughs> lots of ideas. Uh, lots of ways you could chase it down. Mm -hmm. uh, add any of your own thoughts as well to the, uh, to the comments below. Um, and uh, as I said before, share us with your friends. And um, God bless your preaching.